Hello, welcome back to the show. I'm excited because y'all know how much I love human design and y'all know how much I love astrology. And this episode, I got to interview my astrologer and my friend, Maggie Kitch, who is so intuitive and just so knowledgeable with all things cosmic messages. And we talk a lot about the different planets at play right now in this episode. We talk a lot about how one can run their business according to their astrology. We talk some about human design. And I just think that if you're interested in running your business in, you know, a little bit different way, I think I'm just here to kind of usher in a new type of entrepreneur, the person who knows that the way that we've always been taught to work is not conducive to the way we want to run our lives. It doesn't feel good in our body. And by learning astrology and human design and, you know, about the the chakra system and about how your energy flows, I just think it can make you so much more successful and you don't have to burn out in the process. So if that is what you're into, I suggest you take a listen. And uh, I think you're really going to like this episode. Hey friend, welcome to On The Daily. I'm your host, Danielle McCleary, and I am a quantum business coach. I'm the host of this podcast. I'm a multi six figure entrepreneur, co-founder and president of Hype You Media and CEO of Danielle On The Daily Coaching. What I'm really interested in is helping you live a life and have a business that is a full body yes. So through all of my education and all of my experience, I'm bringing you two episodes a week where I will guide you and give you the tools necessary to scale a massive, sustainable, and sexy business using your intuition, wealth energetics, and human design. What we can call it is business biohacking. So if you're down for that, then I say let's frickin' go. I'm so glad you're here. Before we get into that, I have to tell you about my new course that is launching July 1st. We are currently open for registration. It is called Intuition Authority Power. It's my human design for business course. So this is really going to be for the person who knows a little about human design. Like they know that, you know, you know your type, you know your authority. And what you're really looking for now is tools and systems to implement what you know about your human design into your business while learning also a lot about your human design on a deeper level. That's one thing to go online and like search your your design on a free website and just kind of read about it. It's another thing to have someone actually tell you how to implement that into your business in a way that's going to make you more money, that's going to make you more successful, that's going to make you happier, and that's going to give you that sense of alignment and freedom that we all want in business and often don't know where to get it. So that course is currently on sale and I have payment plans available so you don't have to pay it all at once. And we start July 1st. It's about a month long. It actually might be more than that. And I'm like laughing because anybody who signed up for it before um, is just going to have the best deal because obviously like when I add more value, that's when the price goes up. And if you get into it now, you're getting like the absolute best price and probably the lowest price that it's ever going to be. So you can currently get that price, uh, that course for $777. Like I said, you can pay that in installments, two or three payments. And um, it's self-led with some live Q and A's and you have lifetime access to it. So it's something that you're going to be able to like approach and reapproach and go back to whenever you need it, which is so helpful because the first time I did a human design for business course, I go back to that course all the time. And so that is what I'm providing for you. And, um, you know, by taking, I think by taking this course, the best thing that's going to happen is you're going to feel, you're going to feel a lot of peace. For me, that's what learning about human design and my astrology really did is it gave me peace and it also just gave me a bigger tool belt. And when you're an entrepreneur, building a tool belt is honestly the best thing I think that you can do for yourself. So I hope I see you inside. You can click the link in our show notes to register for that. If you have any questions, you can come find me on Instagram, Danielle underscore on the daily. And if you're not a part of my free network community um, called the main character CEO, also click the link in the show notes and you can join that free community. There's free trainings in there, Q and A's all sorts of things. Member spotlights, client wins, great place to network with other entrepreneurs who are building just like you. All right, let's get into this episode. 
Oh my gosh, fam, you're in for a treat today. We got Maggie Kitch on with us and this girl, I have to tell you, so the first thing I ever learned or like the way that I was introduced to you, and you know this story, but anybody listening, obviously Breezy and I got married. If you don't know Breezy, if you're new to the show, Breezy's my wife. We got married in March and a friend of ours, a mutual friend, Christy, she got us this book, this astrology book. And it was all everything about Breezy, everything about me, and then how we mesh and like areas of opportunity. And it was one of the coolest, most personal gifts. And if anybody knows Christy, like this friend, this is like one of those, you know, okay, you have those friends that you just, they just get you and they just, they go right to the heart center. And they're the people that will never look at your registry because they're going to go so much deeper than that. This is Christy. And this was the first thing I ever learned about Maggie. And I had no idea like who even made it. And then I got a message from you on Instagram and you were like, I made your book. And I was like, oh my gosh, how do I work with you? And so it like, it started like that. And then I, I booked a reading with you, which was so mind blowing. And I'm still implementing a lot of that. And now we're working together inside of my mastermind and we're partnering and it's like this cool business collab, but I'm a huge fan of you. And I know everybody listening is going to be a huge fan of you. And I'm just so happy you're here. So welcome to on the daily. Oh my gosh. I feel like starstruck and giddy. And like, even though I know you, it's just so, I feel like, <laughs> I feel so excited. I can't wait to to talk astrology. Um, Have you been on a podcast? No. This no. is your, I, I burst your <laughs> podcast cherry. <laughs> you did. And my astrology book cherry. <laughs> oh, you wait, really? That was your first book? That was the first one that I made for like of that kind. It was very special. Like I put my whole heart into that puppy. <laughs> wow. You need to be selling. Like, I'm about to get you so many book orders <laughs> through this episode. I had no idea. I would have assumed that you'd been doing that for years. Like, that that was amazing. I, mean, I just learned that, and that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they're really great for, for wedding gifts. For I did one for my family. My whole, all 12 of us congregated last July, and I started our family trip with a family analysis. And I don't know if it's because we, we are all older and um, wiser, but right. that was the nicest vacation we ever had. And oh, I really think awesome. because everyone could see each other for who they are instead of like who we think they are or like, mm. oh, this is normal. So this is how you should be too. And instead it was just everyone. And it was, I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm seeing it differently than it was, but it, it was the nicest vacation for me. That's um, awesome. So, yeah, yeah, you need to be making more of those books. Like y'all, <laughs> if you need a good gift or even just want one for yourself, like, and you and your partner, you and your sister, you and your brother, you and your, your you and your kid. Oh my yeah. gosh. Now I'm like, I want one with like me and Owen. Like that would be cool to see. Like, I mean, I know my kid pretty well, but yeah. it would be cool. Um, okay. So tell me what, <laughs> this is such a silly question, but what is astrology in your words like what is it for you what has it done for you tell me all the things okay so astrology is so many things to me um just generically astrology is a study of movements of the celestial bodies and how they are relating to each other in the sky um so that is just very broad how i use it very personally i use it to breathe life into all of my actions so um for me i get a lot of inertia in what i'm doing so if i am doing hard workouts i'm going to stay doing hard workouts like i'm not going to balance it out with stretching i'm not going to balance it out with like restorative i'm going to mm -hmm. stay doing what i'm doing so i have found that if i work with the framework that the cosmos gives us is of ebbing and flowing and moving to this point of a peak where we have we do action we do energy we do momentum we do building we do all of those things and then it wanes away from that peak and it comes down to a pit where um energy is lower and we we are asked to reflect and surrender and restore and rejuvenate and um so by following the cosmic energy and kind of moving my own self-care practice my own business practice um i find that it breathes life into what i'm doing i feel like it magnifies my actions um because now i have a framework that i can follow instead of just being like 
I have to leave in 75 minutes. Like I need to work out, sauna, shower, meditate. Like I would never leave my house if I did everything I wanted to do every morning, just in terms of like self-care and self-development. So to have something to follow that is consistent, it does not, it does not change. I feel like that's one of the only things in the natural world that is super consistent. Everything else changes. We can't, or like we're not separate from the natural world. So we can't assume that like, okay, my energy levels are going to be the same all the time. I'm going to have the same effort and excitement and passion all the time. That's so unreasonable. Well, so, and, and anytime I've tried to do that, it has led to the most epic frustration and burnout. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's going to speak to so many people in itself because there are so many people out there who feel like they know that they don't maintain the same energy. Everyone knows, like we all know we don't maintain the same energy 24 seven, but damn it. We'll all try. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's kind of the balance of masculine and feminine energy as well. Right. Like I feel like, I mean, every, obviously we know this, everything is connected. So whether we're talking about the Kabbalah, whether we're talking about the I Ching, whether we're talking about human design, whether we're talking about astrology, masculine, feminine energy, we're talking about this ebb and flow, which is a universal law. Mm -hmm. And I mean, astrology was kind of the first navigation system ever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The first, the first known records of it are from 3000 BC yeah. and it wasn't localized in one area. It was all people across all continents and it went over spans of time. Like I just think that's the coolest freaking thing yeah. ever. Like yeah. we can, we, we do that now with the internet, but like, right. I'm sorry, what, how did they do that? Right. Well, it's so funny to me when people go, oh, I don't, you know, I don't follow astrology. It's like too woo woo for me. I was like, well, <laughs> it was the first, it was the first thing. Like it's, it's evolution. It's science. It's how we were created. Like it's the, it's the first thing like this, yeah. this dates before the Bible, this dates before anything else. Mm. Yeah. And that's just the, the earliest known record. Like I always like to say that we don't know. Okay. No. We don't know. So uh, no. who knows how much before they were doing that? And I was, okay. So to people that say there's a listener right now, that's like, I'm skipping like the astrology. Come on, get out of town, mm -hmm. shave your legs on Saturday, shave your legs, your armpits, do whatever you do your wax on Saturday with the new moon. That is not going to grow back as fast. The hair is not going to grow back as fast as it would be if you were shaving in a different part of the lunar cycle because it's all connected. Like if yeah. that doesn't show you, I that's a silly example, but it's very tangible. Like yeah, you can Why is that? Why won't your hair grow back faster on the new moon? The energy is waned. It's gone. Yeah. It's not in the building cycle yet. Right. So we, I mean, the farmer's almanac, I feel like it's something people have looked at for a long time. They'll tell you good days to cut your hair if you want growth. They'll tell you good days to plant a fence post or to bury a fence post. Because if you if you do these things like out of order against the, the energies, the planets are gigantic. Like their yeah. energies make a really big difference on us. And just because it's not super in our face, we can make it in our face. Like I shaved my legs on the last new moon and I didn't have to shave them again for like three weeks. And it right. just blew me away. Cause like, I have a lot of hair. It grows very fast. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> and uh, there's, yeah, <laughs> self care trips or tips this morning on the astrology yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, how did you first get introduced to astrology? Like what was your first kind of introduction to it? Okay. So, um, I actually had a wellness center in Indiana, okay. um, from 2018 to 2021 and, um, did lots of face to face helping people. I do massage therapy. I'm a yoga teacher. We do infrared therapy. We did true rife therapy, all sorts of kind of like alternative options. And when, 2020 rolled around and things kind of changed in the how businesses were operating. I was like, I need to find a way that I can help people in a in a an actual way where I'm getting to the root of their problem um, without being face to face to them. I'm like, what? How can I? And astrology just filled filled the the answer to that question. Yeah. Um, so I took three trainings all back to back, like as fast as I could, give me all the information, and um, 
yeah, I felt like it was a way that I could actually help people because mm -hmm. that's what I was trying to do with the wellness center, with massage, especially, you know, hands-on. Mm -hmm. And I was getting so burned out because no one was getting better mm -hmm. because no one was actually addressing the things that were hurting them. They were right. looking to me to say, all right, Maggie's going to fix me today. And I, it was the most unfulfilled it was rough. Like I started to hate it. I started to hate what I was doing. I like, I didn't hate the people, but I like wanted to shake them and be yeah. like, I can't help you. Yeah. You, you have to help you. And, yeah. um, just after diving into astrology, it was like, oh my God, like there's so much that number one, people don't know about themselves. And number right. two, like, we're all just out here living and assuming that everybody else is just like we are. And right. that is not true. <laughs> I always say human design and astrology, like these kind of more cosmic ways of looking at ourselves, they're not going to save you, but they will give you tools to save yourself. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that is better than any Band-Aid, right? Because you're right. So we, I mean, but, th but that's conditioning, right? We're just taught like numb it, fix it, more meds get a massage, you know, use creams. Yeah. Numb it's like yourself. They've taken, they've taken curiosity out of the equation right? completely. Cause right. it's like, well, where is this coming from? I don't know how you can't think that if something right. comes up, like what, what, what did I do differently that mm -hmm. gave me a rash on my skin or why does my neck hurt? Like uh -huh. not just, like, Oh, my neck hurts, but like, why? Yeah. It's, it's probably not just because you slept weird on it. Right. Probably not. I mean, that does happen, but right. most of the time it's how you carry yourself every day. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that is just, that is like a massage example, but it applies to everything. Right. You I remember when I was, and don't worry y'all, we're going to, we're going to circle this back to how it applies <laughs> to astrology. I was, I got married when I was 20 and I moved to London shortly after and about a year after living in London, I loved London. I loved living in London. I loved the people in London. I loved working in London. But I I had a thought, like the day that I got married, I remember having a thought of like, well, this will be fun until it's not. And like, <laughs> then I'll, I, I mean, I, it, that goes back to like trauma. I grew up in like a door, divorce family. So it was just like normal for me to like think that. But I remember like a year after we got married, I, I knew that it wasn't going to last and it was kind of just like biding time at that point. But physically I was like pre-diabetic at that point. And we're talking, I mean, I was a professional dancer. I, I worked out for a living. I was a healthy person and I definitely, sure. I ate sugar. Sure. I ate more pasta than I should have been eating. However, by any stretch of the imagination, it wasn't any more like uh, obsessive than most people, I think at the time. So it was so shocking to me. This is before I really knew about my astrology. This is before I really knew about, you know, my design, who I am. But I look back now and I'm like, my body was literally screaming at me to make a change. Like, and not like a, phys like, not like a eat different, like a, you need to change your path here. This is not the path that you want to be on. Mm. Took me six more years to finally make that choice, but <laughs> yeah. here we are though. Here we are though. <laughs> Look at me now. But yeah, it's so true. Like your body tells you when it's time, you know, like anytime I've, I've been weighing on big decisions that I know, I know the right choice, but anytime mm. I weigh on them, I feel it in my body hundred percent, my neck, my back, my low back, for sure. Mm -hmm. All the things. When it like kicks up like thought dust of like certain kinds of avenues that you're like, why, why am I sitting here actually thinking that I'm like not worth it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's so, yeah. And then we can use those little, they're like little alarm bells, whether it's physical or we're examining our inside and noticing our thoughts are out of just out of left field, not mm -hmm. something you're giving permission to. And then what we do is we get uncomfortable and we're like, well, I have to fix this. Right. And it's really the greatest indication that like, I, I don't know, we work so hard to feel comfortable all the time and like numb out things that don't feel good. But like those little alarm bells, if we ignore them, like we are doing ourselves the worst disservice. Totally. So tell me how 
if, cause now we have people's attention. Like, you know, now people are like, well, okay, now I'm listening. <laughs> So like, how does that relate to our astrology and how can we, you know, we talked a little bit about it, you know, we build, we wane, how can we apply these principles to the way that we grow a business, to the way that we act in our relationships, to the way we treat ourselves? Like, how can we apply these cosmic messages to our life? Yes. Okay. So number one, I always say astrology, the the best thing that it gives you is self-awareness. It gives you an opportunity to examine yourself um, objectively, almost like from a third party's view where you're kind of peering in and just witnessing um, the fact of the matter of of what is like how you, um, I guess, when I look at someone's natal chart, that is a snapshot of the sky the moment that they were born. So that is, to me, is kind of like a roadmap. It's like your own personalized manual. Like these are the tendencies, the characteristics, the qualities that you came in with. And so Mm -hmm. that can be your detriment and it can also be your medicine Mm -hmm. where you get to, you get to look at yourself very, very removed and say, okay, well, my personality is like this. um, So I know I can use that as a liability or I can use it like an asset. Mm -hmm. And then like all of that awareness gives you insight in relationships because then when you know yourself you can step back and look at all the others that are in your life whether it's children um partner like a romantic partner or business partners and you can start to see the patterns within them and suddenly they become a you like love them from this place of that it feels completely different because you can see it's like an avatar when they're like i see you you, mm-hmm. That is how it feels. So you witness them and you're like, wow, my God, I see mm-hmm. you and I love you and I appreciate you and I don't want to get in your way. Like right. develop these strengths, work on those weaknesses and we have everything we need. The awareness can also just give you career inspiration. When you know kind of what your strong suits are, what your skills are, it's easier to use them as an asset instead of a liability. It's that Mm -hmm. awareness that we're just not seeing it um, that makes it hard for us to move and operate in our businesses. So give Um, an example of that. Like says, I mean, we just did my reading. So kind of people are like, so like, like if they're, if you're wondering, what does that mean in like actual application? I am a lot of Sag in my chart, which is a lot of fire. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of fire and I have a lot of water in my chart, which is a lot of instinct, intuition, like feel the pull and jump. Yeah. Yes. And that's Uh, how I've ran my whole life. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And I think that, well, so we, we had our meeting in April, which feels like two weekends ago. That's so crazy. Um, We had talked about giving yourself time. There's like a lull, a lull before Jupiter made a big move in your chart. So we were able to look ahead into the future and say, okay, well, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But we know that these themes are prevalent for this time frame. So in order to get ready for the, this this momentum and excitement that you can generate like right around now, then it's really important to do the rest leading up to it because from rest we get to reflect, we get to we get to do critical thinking. When we're not resting, we are like forming little weird conspiracies in our head all the time that become true to us yeah. because we're flying by the seat of our pants through our life. We don't get to stop and and like ascertain what is actually going on um so with that for you we we were just able like do you feel like that benefited you yeah I mean I've definitely resisted I still struggle with resisting it just because I think of how much fire I have in my chart it's very and I think I shared with you because I have so much fire in my chart and because Saturn has been in one placement for so long for me Mm -hmm. I have always been the way I interact with Saturn is, um, if I'm not moving at a million miles a minute, I get very uncomfortable. And a Mm -hmm. lot of people, it's the opposite when, when Saturn is like fucking with them, they're like, (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's happening. We're like, I, because, because I think because of how much Sag and like the placement of Saturn in my chart, that's my comfort is like fast momentum, speed, fire, you know? And so knowing that April through, I think you said like through pretty much like the end of summer, 
mm-hmm. is like a really good rest period and like just kind of starting to ramp up for that momentum that's coming. Mm-hmm. It's a good reminder for me when I do start to feel out of control because things aren't moving at a million miles a minute. It's easier for me to kind of get back to myself and say, okay, thank you stars. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got to practice trust too. Right? Like- yes. And it's not trust in the star, like, yes, trust in, you know, the divine trust in all those things, but trust in yourself. Like it's, it's more learning how to trust myself. And I don't know if you feel this way, but I, I feel like, you know, how you said it, you have this blueprint, the snapshot when you were born, this blueprint that you come in with. I do the same thing. I say the same thing with human design. I'm like, I think we co-created that before we even came here as a map for us to remember when we get out of control, when things start to get crazy, when we feel like we don't know ourselves. It's, we have that map and we co-created that map with God, source, universe, whoever it is for you. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. And it, so when I, you know, when we do, when I do readings and like when you and I did our reading, it was like a, oh yeah, Mm -hmm. remembering. Yeah. Like, how did I get so far away from like what I am? (laughs) Right. Yeah. And giving yourself permission. I think astrology for me has been super beneficial and um, facilitating in me just that awareness piece that you talked about, but also just learning how to kind of be comfortable with knowing that everything is on, everything is exactly where it needs to be. Everything is right on time. Mm -hmm. That's been soup. That's how it's like really, it's been in such an instrument for me in that way. Yeah. Well, I, I like to think that it's just a mirror. Like it's not dictating anything. It's not like, yeah, when the planets move or the frequencies change and they ping off each other in different ways. And I, I like to think they work like hormones. Like they're just kind of under the surface. It's oh, not yeah. something like when your thyroid produces uh, like thyroid hormone, it's not like you're like, oh, there it is. Found it. Like you, it does its job and you know that it's doing its job because you're still functioning. Right. <laughs> like, I just think that's how the planets kind of affect us. And right. yeah. I think yeah. that's a really good way to look at it. And I think a lot of people that don't understand astrology feel that the pe- I think people who don't understand astrology are looking at people who follow astrology. Like you're just letting this thing like dictate your life. And it's like, no, 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 no. The same no. way that like you take your blood pressure medication and you trust that it's going to do its job. Mm. I have radical trust mm. in my creation. Yes. Yes really not that far off from God. If you really think about it, no, <laughs> it's the same. No, it's not. That's how, I don't know. It's so, it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. It, like, Oh, what are just... some, um, like forecasts coming up? I know we just, obviously we're recording this before the new moon, but now that you're hearing this, the new moon just happened on this past Saturday, but what are we looking at moving forward over the next weeks, months? So, um, After the new moon is a really good time when the moon is waxing. So it's getting bigger every single night till we get to a full moon. That's ideal for building. It's ideal for taking action within your business. It's ideal for like the more masculine side of the spectrum where you know what your goals are. And then you think like, okay, how can I move myself to get there? What can, what can I go out and do in order to get me closer? Um, so that is like personal development of that's for the next two weeks. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be building and, um, taking action. So just, I like to just kind of structure my week like that a little bit. I'll say yes to more things I will do. I'll like do more social, um, like connecting with people, even if it's just like, Hey, let's meet for coffee while we both work. Like we don't, (laughs) I'm not, I don't, that's just me. I'm Scorpio. So, um, yeah, you uh, are Scorpios. You guys, you don't even need to be talking to people. You just want to be, you, you can say I hung out with friends today and you guys could all just be sitting at tables on computers, like not talking to each other, but you hung out with friends today. Yeah. I'm doing that today actually. Cause otherwise I sit and look at my books and the, and the stars for like, I forget like, 
like, but that's another way that astrology has helped you. Like knowing that about yourself, same. I used to think like there was something wrong with me because I never wanted to have sleepovers. I never wanted, like, I don't like group work sessions. I do not. When I'm, if I go to a group work session, all of a sudden I'm like, I don't want to work. I want to hang out. I want to have fun. I want to, I want to play. So if I'm really working, I'm in my, I'm in my office and don't anyone talk to me. Let me just become a hermit for a little while. That's a huge misunderstanding, I think. With, well, I'm also Scorpio rising, but I think that's a huge misunderstanding of Sagittarius is that we're like all extrovert all the time, but we're not. Like we're introverts. Seekers. You're like on insatiable quest for information and knowledge. Yes. Yeah. So that doesn't always that doesn't always come with a bunch of other people because they can be distracting. <laughs> right. My karmic journey is very personal. But it's not, I mean, it's also transpersonal because it's like, it's personal how I receive the information, but I'm also on, it's very transpersonal in, I receive information from a lot of different people and sources, but the way that I implement that has to be done alone. Yeah. I found that for myself. Um, okay. So we are building, we are in our building phase phase in the action so for just for like just a couple notes for yourself this is a really good time to do really strenuous exercise go do your weights go do your hard stuff go do your stuff that makes you sweat because as the energy builds our energy builds and so i think of the the steam in a tea kettle you put water on the stove it starts to boil that air has to go somewhere the steam has to go somewhere so if you don't give yourself an outlet for healthy expending of energy then it's going to come out in ways that you don't like it's going to come out in a nasty comment it's going to come out on the road like road rage it's going to like the ways that when we don't give ourselves permission to let it out then it just forces its way out um so exercising really good to go just get it just Give yourself your personal records this the next two weeks um, for skincare. Hydrating is really great. You want to build your skin. You want to build moisture. You want to slather yourself in all your lotions and potions. Um, for food, I think of more like living foods, like life building foods. So I don't want my body to be made out of Snickers and uh, donuts. So like this weeks I'm going to focus on like everything that I eat. I'm going to be like, do I want do I want to be made out of this? And mm. maybe. I do like a Snickers ice cream bar sometimes, but you know, yeah, I was like, gonna say sometimes I think that would be fun. Yeah, not not all, but I mean, it just kind of helps. Like if I'm sitting at a restaurant and I'm like, oh my god, I don't know what to get, then I'll think about where the moon is, and I'll be like, okay, we're building. So I'm gonna like get something hearty. If the moon's waning, I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna try for soup or like sweet potatoes or something that is grounding or easy to digest. So. Mm -hmm. Those are just the kind of easy ways that, I mean, you could take one of those every day. You don't need to do it all every day. Right. Um, as after that new moon. So Wednesday, this is coming out Tuesday, Wednesday, the next day, the sun's going to move into cancer. Um, so we're going to be moving into cancer season. Um, when, where the sun is just kind of reveals for the collective, for everybody, um, what the tone of your personal expression is going to be. Um, so for me, I notice when the sun goes into water signs, emotions are just a bit closer to the surface. I can cry more. I can like, my mom can tell me a beautiful story on the phone and I can like my throat, I can feel like mm -hmm. I can feel where I don't normally operate that way. I did when I was a teenager and like hormones, but like now it's just not as close. So it's going to change our little personal expressions, the undertones of how we express our own personality. And um, it's fun to witness. It's fun to see how we, there's a little bit of give in everything. Like everybody, mm -hmm. the, the Taurus or the Capricorn that's like hot, rigid and like professional experience little subtle changes as well. So it's fun to be an investigator and just, and witness all of all of the energy moving through everybody. I'm super affected by cancer energy. <laughs> it's Pisces for me. Pisces season, I always feel like womp, womp, womp. Oh, you're Pisces. Yeah, Pisces, I have fun in Pisces. Like March, I'm like, I'm I'm having a great time. But like cancer, I'm like, oh, I'm crying <laughs> yeah. again. I also uh, feel it like the time, I always like share my feelings with everyone <laughs> in, yes. in July. And we know this, go as a business, promoting your business, helping people with their businesses, everyone's going to be a little bit more fine-tuned to the Cancerian themes. Yeah. The 
the mother, the living situation, who you are behind closed doors. So we know that if everyone is is more sensitive to that, then you're going to get more views. People are going to feel like you're speaking directly to them yeah. because it's like, oh my God, wow, that really, that hit me. I feel that. Like, how does she know me so well? And it's because you know what's going on in the mirror of the yeah. sky. You're sharing and more so feelings instead of like more action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, actually a really good tip. Everybody start talking about your feelings on the internet. <laughs> well, I feel We're like going to have everybody, everybody who listens to this episode is just going to be crying on their stories <laughs> and they're going to come and be like, Daniela, it didn't get me sales. And I'm going to be like, you missed the point. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not exactly what we said. <laughs> exactly what I said. Um, okay. So cancer is coming. We are, we are letting those emotions come to the surface as they want to. But like yeah. not force it, right? Like just be really present. Yeah. Yeah. And just don't be afraid to feel that I think is what a, lo a lot of why people get uncomfortable with cancer or any water. Like I just think because it's so it can be like that tidal wave that mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, like I need to do something about this and I need to do it now because my life depends on it. But that's not the case. Mm -mm. Like those feelings, everything that comes up is like a GPS signal. You can use it. Like if it is, if it's like bad, uncomfortable, like negative, like anger, resentment, guilt, examine that. You yeah. can't just put that stuff down and expect nothing to come of it. Right. So if it's joy, happiness, gratitude, like share it with people. Yeah. Write, write a letter, like call your mom, <laughs> tell her, Hey mom, you know, I'm just, I thank you for, thank you for bringing me into the world. Like yeah. I've just been feeling so much. And that's, I think that's what we're here to do is like do the human. I agree. And, and when we live and when we allow that to happen, like, so through July, I actually think this is sidebar. I actually think that's why like the 4th of July in America is like, so like everyone is so happy and like, we love America because like it's cancer season and everybody's emotions are so like heightened anyway, that it's like, like, yes, the flag, like these things that most people like don't care about all of a sudden we're like, yes. Thank you, America. <laughs> like we're just getting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway, that was a side <laughs> thought. But then I always feel like towards the end of July, like after that, we have we're back into fire, right? We're back into Leo. So it's like I always feel any of those. I journal a lot. I journal a lot in July because I do have a lot of emotions, and so mm -hmm. letting that kind of come up and go onto paper. Then as we come into Leo season, I'm like okay, here's my, here's where we're going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the homework. Now it's time to play. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, y'all, I hope when you're listening to this, like if any, if this is giving you anything, I hope it's just giving you like some peace, but also some ideas. And I hope you're just getting really curious with yourself and you know, you can always book a reading with Maggie because she can go through your personal chart with you and kind of help you map that out. But um, what about like any other planets? I know you wanted to talk about Mercury a little bit in communication. Yes. So, um, I want to give you all a little homework assignment. Um, the week after the podcast comes out, Mercury will move into cancer. Now, before I say anything else about that, um, Mercury is the planet that represents how you communicate. It's all like mental faculty. So how you communicate, how you organize, how you, how you learn best, um, all those kind of mental operations, we can gain a lot um, of insights on if we know where Mercury falls in your chart. So I am Scorpio sun, but my Mercury is in Sag your Sag sun and Sag Mercury. So like that, it just- And moon. <laughs> and moon, yeah, and like five others. <laughs> um, but that's why like my Taurus boyfriend has an Aries Mercury and he doesn't feel, he's like way more playful than a normal Taurus because- mm -hmm his mind is, is fast paced. It's fiery. It's energy. It's like, he wants to be doing something all the time. And that is just, it gives us all our own flavor. So to look at mercury in your natal chart, to know where it is when you were born, you can, you can learn like if it's fire, you have a very energetic mind that probably works best in short bursts, not all for stretches and stretches of time. You probably need to, to break it up. Um, and then if your mind, if mercury is in an air sign, this is 
is more intellectual. It's more theories, thoughts, concepts. So that's the realm that your mind is operating from. If your Mercury is in an earth sign, it's more like, I think of like a rhinoceros taking one step at a time, one mm. thing at a time. These are the kids in school that need repetition, repetition, repetition. It seems like they don't care about learning. It seems like they're, they're too slow. Like they can't learn. It's just because their mind takes one step at a time. So you're not going to, you're like a, a little Capricorn Mercury and an Aries Mercury are not going to learn the same way. They're not, if they're in a classroom together, the Aries is going to be like running around the room and the Capricorn's going to be like, why are we not on schedule? Like, it's just, it gives you the flavor of the mind. And then water is more nonverbal. If your mind is in a water sign, you don't really think in words, it's more in feeling. So you need like quiet, you need time to like process. And so just to know that without without knowing Aries Mercury, without knowing Libra Mercury, you can get a really good feel for how you best learn, for how you communicate, and you can see it in all of the other people that you interact with. I have an aunt that has a whole bunch of air, like Aquarius and Libra out mm. the wazoo. She is always five steps ahead of you in conversation. Like she doesn't listen. She talks really fast. She already knows what you're going to say. So there's no like you can start to pick them out very well. And then that brings you understanding and it brings you like, okay, so I know that I do things in bite-sized pieces one step at a time. And I know that they are very fast. So I'm gonna schedule myself a little bit more time to go through this before we would get together because we're not operating with the same like operating system. It's like iPhone and Android, like it just doesn't. And that can be really frustrating if you're not aware. Right. If you don't, if you don't practice awareness, it can get very much like you get consumed by the frustration. Um, so that is helpful about knowing your natal placement, but the where Mercury is right now in the sky is for the collective. So that's going to set the tone for all of us communicating here on Earth. Um, when So next week on Monday, the 26th, Mercury is going to move from an air sign, which is fast intellect. It's thoughts, theories, concepts, like all this imaginary realm. Um, it's going to move into cancer. So it'll just be interesting to see, to witness now that you have this information, how the like communicating between people changes from like all over the place to more like it's more like poetry. It's got mm. more flow. It's soft and like it's more nurturing. And I mean, those are just like the 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 happy qualities of cancer. Like there there are some that are that are tough to work with. I don't like to say good or bad, but um, just practice watching, listen to how people talk and get, get, it's so fun to be like, Hmm, I feel like they probably have a fiery mind <laughs> or like, Oh my God, they won't shut up. They probably have an air mind. Like, how yeah. is this? um, I, I think my, because like, I'm realizing when you were talking about mercury and like individual natal placements and you were like, I always imagine like people with an earth sign for Mercury, like they need repetition. Their mind is very grounded and it moves very philosophically. I feel like almost, mm -hmm. um, I was like, I guarantee you my son has his Mercury in Capricorn. And I looked it up and Owen's Mercury is in Capricorn. And I was like, yes. he's just, that's exactly how his, like, he is so smart. I mean, mm -hmm. Owen, like the only, Owen's an Aquarius, but the only thing in Owen's chart that is Aquarius is his son. He's got a lot of Capricorn in his chart. Mm. He's also got some Taurus, like Taurus is his rising and it's in his first house. So he's like ground, like Mr. Earth Angel. Like he is just <laughs> Mr. Earth Angel, but he is so philosophical. He is so, he like, he needs to tell, like if he's telling you a story about something, it is like, we're not, my brain is like, I got it. Yep. We're good. And he goes, no mama, <laughs> this happens. And then this happens. I'm like, yeah. And then this, and he goes, no mama. <laughs> Just and then wait. this, yeah, he has to tell the whole story where my brain is like, yep, got it. Moving on. Like, and I'm so blunt and he is not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when he gets into school, it's going to be so helpful for you to know this and, and where he's like having homework. I don't know. I don't know his exact age, but like flashcards are going to be your friend. Like that he, kid is going to have to go through things a couple times for it to really be in here. Yeah. I mean, he, 
he's going into second. He's brilliant. I mean, he's going into second grade. He's in like the gifted program, but the gifted program isn't like for smart kids. It, yes, they are smart, but it's like more of a, it's the kids that think differently. And that's yeah. Owen to the nth degree. He's also a projector in human design. So he's just like, he sees things just so differently than everyone sees them, mm. but he is they did advance him in math. And so he's actually in third grade math. And one of the biggest things I said is I was like, well, this is either going to go really well for him or it's going to be a train wreck because sometimes he needs you to explain things. So if, if he's got it, mm -hmm. he can, he's the only kid I know that can like learn division over breakfast and then teach his first grade teacher about it at lunch. Like he's just, but <laughs> it's because he's passionate about it. If he doesn't care, but that's yeah. so helpful for me to know as his mom, like knowing his astrology, knowing his human design, knowing like, of course, my wife and him like butt heads in the way they communicate. He is a Capricorn Mercury. She is a Gemini Mercury. Like <laughs> it is opposite, like the <laughs> most opposite way of communicating. And sometimes like if they're in it, they're in it. And I'm like my fiery Sagittarius Mercury can very quickly be like, here's the situation. Let's move on. And I'm the one that usually is like the, like, you know, just <laughs> pull them apart. <laughs> yeah. But like, can you imagine not knowing that? Like, I feel like so many people, like they don't, if you don't know these things, you don't know the roadmap and it's not dictating for you, mm. but it is a roadmap. And if you are feeling out of control, maybe if you tried to work with the cosmos and adapt to the cosmos, instead of trying to resist it all the time, you might not be burnt out as much. You might not be as frustrated all the time. You might not get as bitter or angry or down on yourself or depressed, right? You can actually learn to work with the energies of the universe. Mm -hmm. And I have to, I picture it in my mind's eye that you like, then when you're taking actions because you're not flailing, you're not like, wow, what is going on? Then your actions are like rooted in the megaphone that is the planetary energy. And it's like, like amplifying what you're doing because you're working in flow with the universe instead yeah. of like with your two little nose holes above the water, like send help. <laughs> right. It's yeah. not, I mean, this is just another way that you can look at your life and like just as you would go to therapy, just as you would go, you know, and take yoga because it clears your mind. It's better for your mental health. Like this is, I think learning your astrology is just another tool on the belt. It's not everything. Right. It's most, the most, I mean, even I would say even you and I who like are so based, like our lives are so grounded in astrology, human design, like just the universe in general, it's not everything. And like, it's not, it doesn't dictate my decisions. Right but it does, it is a tool that I can pull when, mm. when I need it. Like you said, mm. if you're at a restaurant, you don't know what to order. It is a tool you can use. If mm. I'm feeling extra spicy and emotional and like, I want to burn everything to the ground. <laughs> it's a good tool for me to pull out and be like, well, what's actually happening in the universe right now? And like, can I actually work with this a little bit better than I'm, than I am currently? Yeah. Like where's the release valve? I, I know it's somewhere I can find it. Um, and it's always with, it's always there. You don't need anything extra fancy. I mean, it's nice to have an app to know, cause I don't, I don't, I can't identify where everything is just in the sky, but like it, uh, there's a widget you can put on your phone. Yeah. Do you like, I have widget Smith. Like you can, you can't see this if you're listening, but I have the current placement of the moon on my phone as my home screen. So like currently it's, it's a crescent it's, um, 13 point or it's 13% alum. And it's, um, tells me when the moon is setting, when the moon is rising and it tells me how many days until, you know, the new moon. And that, that's my, I just look at that. So like, if I, if I am like, why am I feeling this way? And I go, Oh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's right and then it gives you permission to to be feeling that way without yeah. having to change it without having to be like ah you know like yeah what are yeah. some of your favorite apps that you use um I it's been a while since I tried CoStar I know that's a really uh, popular one the first time I used her the first couple of times I felt like afraid so I was like I'm not going to use that one mm -hmm. um it just made me nervous which is weird because we're not afraid of astrology we mm -hmm. do that's not that's not what's going on here um but now I really like astrometrics a lot okay. 
Um, that one will give me a little, it'll tell me like what the transiting planets are doing in relation to my natal planets. So okay. like how, where the stars, where the planets are moving now, like if Mercury right now is conjunct where Mercury was when I was born, I know that I'm going to have an, a mentally active day. Cool. And so I can plan, I can look at my schedule and be like, okay, that's a brainstorming day. I'm going to say no to these three things that popped up that aren't going to let me use my mind as much as I want to. Cool. And it just, yeah, it, yeah, I love it. Well, I adore you and I can't thank you enough for this conversation. I know like everybody listening is just on fire. So y'all. We are putting in our show notes ways that you can go and work with Maggie. Her Instagram is, what's your Instagram? It's at magnetic, um, but it's kind of spelled more like my first and last name. So it'll be in the show notes too. So yeah, we'll, we'll put it there for you. And then links to her, the ways to work with her, but book a reading with her. Like it's going it, to, it, if anything, it's going to give you more, more tools. And that's what we're here for. So thank you. I love you. And we'll chat soon. 